our country back. Well, how did we get here? How did we reach the point where we're actually afraid we're going to lose our country, our Constitution, our liberty? Well, let's go over some things that I think we all know. Washington is broken, and the two-party system is corruptly broken. Not will fix itself, and it can't be reformed from within. Now, if we're going to save our country and our freedom, we've got to chart a new course away from Washington and outside the two-party system. I'll talk later about why that two-party system is broken, why I'm running as a libertarian, because I think that's the only course we have available to us. I have a plan for Texas independence, even though it's not secession, but it's a plan for when Washington is not just broken, but has totally collapsed. When's that day coming? I don't know. Because tomorrow, next year, 10 years. But we need not to wait until it's happened to decide what we're going to do about it. A day when we don't have functioning currency anymore, because you can't have some trillion dollars of debt counting the unfunded liabilities, and expect you're going to have a function currency. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to take our country back? Well, Texas has to stand strong. Because we have to, we can't lose Texas. Ronald Reagan said, America's freedom's last stand. I say Texas is America's last stand. So that's why we take a faith in Texas. And I'm not turning my back on America. No, I'm saying we're going to take our country back one state at a time. But it starts in Texas. Now, plan for Texas independence is I can go into detail on questions if you want to, but basically every aspect of it is designed to address that point in time when America has collapsed, Washington D.C. has collapsed. Things we have to do on our own for securing our own borders and our Texas State Guard, we're getting our fiscal house in order so that we don't rely <coughs> on the 40% of the Texas budget that comes from the federal government. We get ready to, to stand our own two feet, fiscally and always, as we really should have been doing all along. So we slash our budget 50%. Yes, Texas is spending. Well, does that sound drastic? It only took, takes us back to when uh, Rick Perry first took office, which I know seems like an eternity ago, <laughs> but it's really not. And so those are the, we've got to eliminate property taxes, because we've got to own our property. We've got to defend our property rights, whether it's our real property or land, it's being seized by eminent domain to benefit the <coughs> powerful. Our water, which is being stolen from our aquifers in rural Texas to fund the rich and powerful who are building developments in places where they never should have built, the market said, because there's no water there. We've got to uh, defend our gun rights, because we know they're coming after them, because they know like we know. That's true. That that's what we have to have to defend ourselves. There may be some rights that you can lose and hope to get back, over time, but not your right to, to bear arms. You lose that, and you've lost it for good, and you've lost every other right, because that's essential to defending every aspect of freedom we have. So those are the things we've got to do in our plan for Texas independence, and no, I'm not talking secession. I'm talking about a return to constitutional government, push back on these unconstitutional federal acts, which is the origin of almost all of our problems something called nullification. I'd be glad to elaborate on that. This group, I think, probably knows where I'm going on that. It's just a, a system that our framers designed to keep this from happening. That when Washington, not yet when, Washington overreached, reached its constitutional boundaries, the states, which created the federal government and is its master, would push back and say, no, restore constitutional power. A great design, but no idea implements itself. That's where the states and us citizens have lost <coughs> our job because we did not demand that the federal government honor our contract. And that's what we have to start doing. Another thing with nullification is not, it's not suing the federal government. You hear me, Greg Abbott? <laughs> no, that's the opposite of nullification. To go into one part of the federal government and, as a sovereign state and ask that you tell the other part of the federal government to observe the Constitution, well, you know, that's not the way it was designed to do. So we can't rely on this. Who, who here thinks that the Supreme Court is going to save our Constitution? It was their job to declare unconstitutional acts that and only void. They're not honoring their oath, oh, not doing their job. But we have to. And that, so nullification is basically when an unconstitutional act is being done in your state. We say, in a variety of ways. The method is not important. That's unconstitutional. It's null and void. We're not going to participate in the state. We're not going to aid in it. And furthermore, anyone 
who does is most likely violating some aspect of Texas law, and we'll address that accordingly. Meaning, you'll be arrested, prosecuted, whatever happens will happen. But you don't have a defense that I was only doing what the federal government told me to do. So that's my plan for Texas independence. And that's the way I see of how we, we do this. I have a vision of what has happened to us and what's going to happen to us in the near future. I have a plan to defeat that federal tyranny, and I have the guts to see it through. There's no one else in this race who has even one of those, much less all three. The two-party system is corrupt. If you believe that and you internalize it, then you know that we can only save our liberty in Texas through the Libertarian Party. The hypothesis that you can get liberty through the Republican Party in Texas has been tested for 20 years. And it has failed. Mm -hmm. It's not been a single statewide uh, non-Republican <laughs> elected in Texas in 20 years. Majority, super majorities in the House and the Senate. What's the problem? Maybe we hadn't gone down the tubes as fast as some other states, but that's the comparatively speaking, that's not good enough. In absolute terms, we have lost freedom. We have more debt, more taxes, more spending, more a violation of the Constitution by our federal government. Loss of liberty by any standard of measure under Republican leadership. So that's why I say we've got to charge your course. That's why I'm running for Libertarian. Not just that we have the right ideas, but we're not corrupt. Because that's what's happened to the other two parties. They're corrupted by their special interest masters. So that they have to do the bidding of this. And this is why you get some liberty activists, liberty candidates elected one or two here, and it doesn't change that. You can get people, that's why you don't send people to Washington anymore, because it doesn't matter. You can't affect things in Washington anymore, I'm convinced, for the near term. But even here in Texas, we've seen people go and they can't get anything done. Seemingly, we've seen more good people go. I think if the Republicans say, oh, we got a super majority, we can't get anything done. If you got down to it and there was one single Democrat in the Texas House, they would say, that's the reason we can't get anything done. We don't have a unit, but they don't want to do it. We've seen this many times where they play the shell game, where they, they let people be the bad guy who uh, uh, destroys a liberty, um, a bill, time and time again. So nothing gets done, nothing comes through. And I want to tell you why. Why is this? Why is this that you cannot get liberty through the Republican Party? And I don't care how many precinct chairs you have, I don't care how many candidates you have, I don't care how many uh, elected representatives you have. It's the primary system. The Republican Party is a convention system. We don't have these expensive primaries. We totally fund every aspect of our convention process ourselves. The primary system is prohibitively expensive. You cannot come out of that system unless you have big bucks. How big? Well, it depends on the office you are. But at governor's level, you got to have, oh, $30 million, $40 million. Or you're not competitive, so they say. Well, how do you get that money? You get it from the rich and powerful. Who gives $40 million? Well, guess what? Anyone that has $40 million to give doesn't give it unless they have complete confidence. They're going to get a good return on their investment. So you can say, well, we got what's got in the bank, and I said, yeah, that tells you all you need to know. And it's not good. Can we vote for somebody who has $40 million in the bank? You know, he's bought and paid for it. And that's it. And that's not going to change. Because to prevail in the primary system, you have to have uh, TV advertising and all this to, to mm -hmm. persuade the people who don't pay attention to anything other than what they see on TV to get them out to vote and vote for you. So that's why I say I'm doing the convention system. And it's not just because of that. It's, I truly believe in the Libertarian Party and its principles. But I think the convention process is much better. We don't have to go through that. We have, so we can have a different way. But So how do you compete, even in a convention party? How do you compete in November? <coughs> I guess the guy was about $40 million. Well, in, think about this. In a competitive three-way race, if I can get competitive, it changes the dynamics every way, in the way they don't see it coming. 
And that takes it from the magic number of 51% that you have to do to take office, takes it down to 34, 35%. Well, think about who those people are, that, that segment of the 34 to 51 percent, that 70 percent. Who are they? That's the less you live. That's the people who decide elections. That's a swing voter who, who doesn't do any uh, research on their own. They go out and seek information. They just sit there and expect things to come to them, usually by TV. And then they make their decisions on really strange grounds. Who has the best hair? Who? Who has the best smile? Who looks the nice? Who's got the nice name? Okay, if you can forget about those people and say, to reach those people, you have to have a mushy message that matches their mushy thought processes. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about saying, so I'm, I'm not going after that 15, 17%. I'm getting to the 34%. Then you can tell your message. If you have a strong living message that you intend to keep, and you don't have to, you spend the big bucks to reach the mushy middle. You don't have to have as much TV advertising. You have people like this, and there are people who will be actively involved and think for themselves and seek out solutions. People who know a country is dying and think that's a bad thing and they want to do something to stop it. That's a, I think that's at least a third of, of Texas voters right there. So you can reach those people in ways that doesn't take the big bucks. But we're going to try to do as much as we can in this campaign. I mean, we have uh, resources, uh, and if we, I think if we can reach a million dollars, we can be competitive with this strategy and this approach. Because all, over the next year, uh, since I ran in 2010, things are, I, I, have been, events have proven me wrong on the things I said we needed to do. And if I'm in governor, in 2010, I think we'd be much farther along and we'd, we'd be prepared to, to re resist this federal tyranny. We have to start now, though. Uh, recently, in the last biennium, we had an unexpected windfall in Texas revenues. Uh, things that weren't even budgeted for. It didn't just come in. came in because of the increased oil and gas drilling and the royalties and the revenues that came from that. Like a 26% increase. Well, what did they do with that money, our Republican legislature? Spend it. If I'm the governor, I'm going to use the power to get in office, which is considerable, to stop that. You may have heard it said the governor is a weak position in Texas. No. If you love liberty, the Texas governor is the most powerful office on the face of the earth. And that's why I'm the Texas governor. The Texas governor is the only force that can be a counterweight to the federal tyranny. Texas governor, using Texas, is the only thing I know of that can put, effectively push back on Washington. Because the Texas governor is the commander of our military. Uh, under our Constitution, and our Texas military is the State Guard, National Guard, Air National Guard. The Texas <coughs> governor has the line out of veto. President doesn't have that. If I'm the Texas governor, when this windfall came in, I would have, and they spent the money, I would have lined all that out. And I would have <coughs> matched some funds to it, too. Now, we'll call it a special session. Governor, the uh, president can't do that. I'll call a special session and so say, we're going to get our budget in shape. We're going to restore fiscal sanity. We're going to end this dependence. We can ourselves off of the federal government now. We will sit down and do it. And we would have a budget now that would see us through. The other things we need to do, I mean, we need to find a way to replace a currency that's collapsed. And there are ways you can do that when, in Texas. With the Texas Bay and, and Texas uh, approved uh, currency. So these are the things that Texas government can do, things I want to do. When I ran for governor in 2010, they would ask me, of course, are you going to run for president? I said, no, I want to be Texas governor. Why would I accept a demotion? <laughs> right? right? Well, that's the way I see it. Yes. It's funny, but it's true. Texas governor most powerful office on the face of the earth. And if anybody doesn't understand that, they shouldn't be seeking office, and we shouldn't vote for them. So that's why I want to do this. I want to, I want to save our liberty. I want to save our country. I want to save America by saving Texas. Let me finish up on a positive note, because I know all this sounds very dire. I know how this ends. <coughs> I've read the last chapter in the book. I've seen the last part of the movie. The good guys are. 
forces of liberty will defeat the forces of change. But it's not going to happen unless just sitting around and wishing it was so. Or hoping it's so, or talking about it, or thinking about it. No, it happens when we act. And it doesn't take every one person. It doesn't even take that 34% that we need to get the votes from. It takes maybe 3% of the people. That's why any huge idea has happened over history. There's about 3% of the people really work and make it happen. And the rest just don't follow along. So if we can band together in this way, I want us to, as Texans, to do once again what we have done before, <coughs> and that is face down a federal time and change the course of history. Thank you. Thank you.